Okay, we are um, starting off here with the uh, first lecture um, in statistics, and the first thing we're going to cover is uh, quantitative versus qualitative data. So, quantitative data is data that can be ranked. So, if you think of something like shoe size, some people have bigger feet than other feet, um, size six for a man is going to be smaller than a size 8 for a man. Height, some people are taller than other people. Something even a little squishier like self-esteem, you can still score on a scale. You can give people a set of questions um, and ask them things like, how do you feel about yourself? Um, am I someone that is confident? Da, da, da. And you can add up those responses and get a scale. Um, and then we'll do this example later. Um, in class with airplane lift, like measuring how high an airplane travels. Um, the other variable is, uh, other type of variable is qualitative. So these are things that you can categorize, but you can't really rank. So if you think about gender, political affiliation, someone's major, um, whether the car is a Honda, a Toyota, a Dodge, etc. So some practice here. Uh, you might want to go ahead and pause this for a second and try to work through these and see if you can identify which ones are qualitative and quantitative. So I'll pause for a second. Okay, um, you could say things like gender, that's going to be qualitative. You can't rank male and female, they're just different categories. A region, somebody comes from the northwest versus the southeast, again, not rankable, just different categories. Weight would be rankable. Most anything that's a physical dimension can be uh, uh, measured quantitatively. Uh, number of steps that somebody takes between, say, their dorm room and uh, the lecture hall, that would be quantitative. And then the last two are a little tricky. Social security number would be um, qualitative, even though there's a set of numbers, because they're not used um, quantitatively. It's not as if if you have a larger social security number than your friend, you go, woohoo! Um, they're just different labels. They're like names. Um, and then letter grades, A, B, C, and D, those are letters. They're not numbers, but they um, lie on top of a numeric system, typically, you know, something like 100% um, to 90 is an A, 80 down to um, 70 is a B, etc. So that's the basic distinction qualitative versus quantitative. And then the uh, next thing we're going to talk about is scales of All right, the next concept is scales of measurement. The idea behind this concept is being able to specify the level of precision at which you're measuring a given variable. We'd like to measure things at the highest level of precision possible, but some things, as you'll see, we can only measure at a lower level. So think about people's different um, religious orientations to start with here. So if someone is Baptist versus Catholic versus Methodist versus, um, say, uh, vegetarian, just kidding, but those different categories are distinct, but you can't rank them. You can't say that somehow Baptist is higher or lower than Presbyterian or whatnot. So that's measuring stuff at the nominal level. Nominal meaning just to name something. Ordinal, one step up, means is, is from the root to order. And so this is where you're not only classifying as you do with nominal, but you're also ranking. So if you think about Olympic medals, someone could have the gold medal, which would be higher than the silver, which would be higher than the bronze. But note that the intervals between them are not necessarily consistent. So that you can't say that the difference between this person and this person is the same as the distance between this person and this person. To get that, we need to go up to the next level of measurement, the interval level. And that's where we classify, rank, and have equal intervals. So here you can see um, things, again, are on this continuum. So we're classifying and ranking. But also now there's equal intervals between these. So an example would be the Celsius temperature scale, where um, going from 20 degrees to 30 degrees is the same jump as going from 30 to 40. However, if you're at zero degrees Celsius, it can still get colder. So I went to school in Minnesota. Many days, the weather is below freezing. It's below zero degrees um, Celsius. 
they don't put that in the college brochure, but I found it out. Um, to get a true zero, you need to go up to the ratio level. That's where you're classifying, you have equal intervals, and you have this true zero. Example would be the Kelvin measure of temperature for those of you that are um, science nerds. Zero degrees Kelvin is as cold as something that can get. The molecules have stopped moving. You can't get any colder. So that's a ratio level measurement. More common ones that are ratio would be anything to do with the physical world like time, space, distance, speed, weight. All those things have uh, true zeros that you start from that you can use in measurement. So think about um, a baby's weight at birth. If a baby weighs eight pounds, what level of measurement are we using? Well, it's ratio because you start at zero and then you move up to eight. And if someone, and the second way you know that it's ratio, the first is if there's a true zero. The second way is if you can set up a ratio like this. Does a baby who weighs 16 ounces weigh twice as much as a baby that weighs eight ounces? If you answer yes to that, it must be at the ratio level of measurement. Another example, if it's 20 miles to Charlotte, is that twice as far as, excuse me, if it's 20 miles to Charlotte, is that twice as far as another town that's only 10 miles away? Yes. Or uh, if something takes four hours versus two hours, can you say that one takes twice as long? Yes. If that ratio works, then you're at this ratio level of measurement. All right, so some practice here. Um, so this here is a Likert scale and as you can see it goes from strongly disagree up to strongly agree and you can answer either one, two, three, four, or five. So what level of measurement? Well we can assume that the scores are in order and that the distance between these from one to two to two to three is the same as between three to four and four to five so it's at the interval level and that's as high as we can say it is because there's no true zero. So most psychological things that you're measuring on a scale, or what this is technically called a Likert scale, um, you can say it's at the interval level, but we don't have a true zero. So for example, measuring self-esteem or depression or how liberal or conservative somebody is, we don't know what a true zero would look like, so the best we can do is the interval level of measurement. Here's another example, and here we have um, different football teams ranked in terms of um, their standing. So one is Oregon, excuse me, one is Auburn, two is Oregon, three is TCU, four is Stanford. This is um, an example of what le level of measurement do you think? Well, it's ordinal. The teams are in order, but you're not saying that Auburn is the same uh, amount better than Oregon as Oregon is to TCU or TCU is to Stanford. Auburn may be a much better team than Oregon and TCU and then Stanford may be far behind those three. So we don't know that their equal intervals would be the ordering level of measurement that's just ordinal. Next we have, uh, I have a speedometer here to represent speed. What level of measurement is speed? Well, is there a true zero? Yes, you can start at zero and go up from there. And then um, you also notice that it has equal intervals. So 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 represent the same 10 minute, or excuse me, 10 miles per hour change in speed. And also um, the other hint you have is that somebody that's going 80 miles an hour is going twice as fast as somebody that's going 40 miles an hour. If you can apply that logic, that means it's at the ratio level. And again, most, most things we measure that are of the physical world type can be measured at the ratio level. Okay, another example of that would be, have a tape measure here, that's measuring distance, that's going to be at the ratio level of measurement. And if you're not doing this already, you probably want to be writing down what the answer is to these different ones so you can go back and study. All right, and then here we have another scale um, <clears throat> based on the same kind of logic of the strongly disagree to strongly agree, and it's asking people to think about these things and indicating how much it applies to them. So hit pause for a second while you try to just read through these and think about what's the construct, what's the, um, the variable that's trying to be measured by these scale items. 
So hit pause. Okay, welcome back. So actually this is measuring depression. So it turns out that depressed people tend to answer higher on these kinds of items. And um, this is from a classic measure of depression called Beck's Depression Inventory. And it's many more items than this, but um, this is a sampling. And it's because it is based on a scale like this, um, you can assume that these are equal intervals, the distance between these different levels. But we don't know what a true zero is on any of these things. And you can't say that someone who answered four of these um, positively versus just two of them is twice as depressed. It doesn't work like that. So it's an interval level of measurement. Okay, next uh, set of practice ones here. Um, a surveyor measuring distance. That's physical, right? Two miles, twice as much as one mile. There's a true zero. You start at zero and you count up, so that's got to be ratio. Um, here we have military expenditures for different countries, and they're ranked in order. Well, if you see rank, that's a good indication that you're at the ordinal level of measurement, because the distance between the United States and China is not going to be the same as between China and the United Kingdom, United Kingdom and France, etc. How much something weighs? So I gave you before the example of the of the baby, um, some a baby that's weighing 16 pounds is twice as much as the one that weighs 8 pounds. There's a true zero you start with, so you know you're at the ratio level. And then the classic examples of the metals, the gold, the silver, and the bronze. We know this is at the ordinal level. You're ranking people, but you're not um, using a consistent um, gap or interval between the different rankings. Um, and here's another one. This is a, an interesting way of using a Likert scale that you can use with children or with people of different cultures because across all cultures um, frowns are understood to be sad and um, smiles are understood to be happy. So you could have someone indicate where they are in terms of their feeling. So these are equal intervals but there's no true zero so it's at the interval scale of measurement. Another example would be a clock, the time, think about it, four hours twice as much as two hours. Is there a true zero? Yes, something can be zero when it starts and then you count up from there. Then the last thing I have an ID card here to represent like your student ID number. What level of measurement is that? Well, it's simply nominal. You're just applying it like a label. You're not proud if your ID number is higher than somebody else. It doesn't have that kind of meaning. Okay. And then one uh, last slide here on the scales of measurement. What's the relevance? What's the importance of talking about scales of measurement? Well, the key thing is that the more precision you have, the higher the level of measurement, the more statistics are available um, and they're slightly stronger. And the big break is as follows. If you have nominal or ordinal level data, you'll be using what we call non-parametric statistics. And if it's at the interval or ratio level, you're using parametric statistics. So just make a note, interval or ratio level, those are parametric um, kind of statistics that we can apply. And for example, this semester we'll cover these. You don't know what these mean yet, but correlation, specifically Pearson's R, the Z-test, the T-test, the F-test, these are all examples of um, parametric tests that we'll cover.